I think sunflowers are such a fun um, subject because they have such personality. They're almost like little people. Yeah. You know, there are some that are very kind of droopy and like tired looking. And then there are some that are very kind of almost proud and defiant looking. And so yeah. it's, it's nice to see the variety of, of Absolutely. That. Our guest today is Tara Will. And Tara, what are you going to do for us today on this last day of 2020? We are going to do some sunflowers today, and we will discuss the importance of light and shadow via these beautiful flowers that have so much personality. Oh, how exciting. Uh, well, how was your 2020? Oh, 2020 was rough. We've recovered from COVID because the whole family got COVID. So that oh, no. Was um, but I feel like I have some immunity now. I can go out and travel and paint fun air. So it's good. <laughs> so uh, what what was that like for you? Um, it wasn't too bad. It just kind of was a lingering experience. So it took yeah. a time to feel back to normal. I'm finally getting a sense of smell back and all that good stuff. So, oh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry you had to go through that. And it sounds like the whole family went through it. Yes, the yeah. house. So. Well, I, for one, uh, learned a lot in 2020. Uh, I pivoted. I'm sure you did, too. Had to yeah. do some things I never thought I'd have to do. But you know what? I came out stronger on the back end of it. So in spite of the fact that uh, I'm glad 2020 is over and we're moving into a hopefully a new a new year and a, uh, a, a new return to some form of normalcy soon i'm uh i'm celebrating that it's over and uh celebrating that we got a new one coming in i'm with you that's great yes. well uh we're all we're all gowned up with nowhere to go yes. <laughs> no one can get together but here we are so. that's right all right well i'm gonna bring you right back in just a minute i'll make a couple of announcements my last announcements for 2020 and then uh, we'll see you on the back end of that in just a minute. Sound like a plan? Sure. All right. Thank you. Okay. Tara Will is our guest today. And happy New Year to you this New Year's Eve. Uh, we're really, really, really thrilled that it's over. But, uh, you know, it's, been, it's just been a crazy year. This is day number 281. Think about that. 281 days since coronavirus quarantine began in most, most parts of America. We've been on here for you every day, trying to keep you upbeat, happy, feeling good, learning about art, learning something new. We have had literally audiences all over the world. What I would love for you to do today, if you would be willing, if you're willing, you don't have to do it, just if you're willing. And that is, we want to celebrate the new year. And so a great thing for you to do is to hit the share button if you possibly can, depending on the platform you're on. If you would share this with others, we can bring more people into our art family. We have had thousands and thousands. Average view has been 10,300 a day. The, uh, the highest we've seen in replays uh, after the fact is around 20,000, 21,000. So that's pretty amazing for a one-hour broadcast. And so... We would love for you to share it so that we can not only reach other people, but, you know, it would help us. So 3 p.m. are the video instructional segments. 12 p.m. Or PM is me and my guests. And we're going to come up with a, a name for this show because we're going to keep it going. I would love for you to put your suggested names in the comments section. And also, if you have suggestions on uh who you would like to see on the show, what you would like to see covered, if you have ideas for trips that we should be taking. I take people on trips annually uh, to exotic places, sometimes more than once. I've taken people to Cuba a couple of times, to Africa, to New Zealand. Uh, we're taking a group of people to Russia. As a matter of fact, uh, it, in case you haven't had a chance to look at that, you have the time today, just check out, go to paintrussia.com, and read the PDF that's there because you will find it's going to be a really amazing painting trip and we would love to have you. Also, uh, 
make sure you go to coffeewitheric.com and check out the blog. Uh, massive number of people reading now. Thank you so much for that. And uh, it comes out every Sunday morning. We love having you. Now, one thing I would suggest that you do is consider working on your career. If you are interested in selling your artwork, interested to grow and make a living uh, from your artwork, then I highly recommend that you get something to study and learn about what you could do. This particular book is one of the options for you. It's called Make More Money Selling Your Art, Proven Techniques for Turning Your Passion into Profit. I happen to be the author. I happen to think it's going to be helpful for you. So let's hope so. Okay. Uh, what else? Oh, one other thing. Uh, I would also like to ask another request. Would you follow me on Instagram? Eric Rhodes, R-H-O-A-D-S. It's like when you're calling me. Hey, Eric, R-H-O-A-D-S. There's no E in there. Uh, follow me on Instagram. That'd be very helpful. Now, I want to show you an artist whose work you're going to love. This is Tara Will. And Tara has a fabulous style, a wonderful approach, and just does some really beautiful, lots of great colors. I feel, her work feels very contemporary to me. It's just kind of got a nice edge to it, which is really beautiful. And uh, you're going to get to learn from her today. Look at this beautiful work. Today, she's going to be painting sunflowers and talking about light. I love that. Uh, light and uh, shadow. So let's welcome back Tara Will. All right, Tara. Hi. Hi. You look so nice. Just give us a, just give us a turnaround so we can kind of see the whole thing. I yeah. care for you. Very nice. Very nice. Love the earrings. Love the pearls. Very elegant. You know, I was going to wear my pearls today, but I thought it might be over the top. Just a little. Just a little. All right. It's your time now. I'm going to I'm gonna shut up and uh, let you take over and do some sunflowers. All right. So um, I'm actually going to work from a photo reference. I usually do this kind of when the weather's poor or um, when I can't be outside. Um, because I predominantly like to work plein air, but um, sometimes it's not in the cards. So I have a lot of photo references. I always recommend that you work from your own photo references just because I feel like you have a better connection with the photo reference if it's something that you've taken yourself because you've experienced it in person. So I always recommend that. And um, yeah, we're going to get started here. So. <laughs> Um, I'm working on Snellier Le Carte paper. Uh, this paper, I really love it. It has a great even texture. It is a sanded paper, so it has a nice um, grit to it, a nice feel to it. Um, it. The only bad thing about it, especially for plein air, is that it cannot get wet. So um, caution when you're outside if it's uh, poor weather, don't take it out in the rain or anything like that because you will be sorry. Um, don't paint in the rain. And you're going to be doing pastels today. So yes. Right? So I work in pastel. Um, it's such a beautiful medium. I think it's kind of underrepresented in the plein air circuit for some reason. Um, so I encourage all of you pastel painters to get out there, take your box with you. And um, well, we have a stage devoted to pastel painting at the plein air convention. We think it's very important. Yes. And it's such a good medium, um, for outside. It's so immediate. It, um, it just, to me, it's, it's just a great medium. So um, I encourage anybody who is working in pastel to figure out a system that works for you because I kind of went through a lot of different systems to find one that works for me um, and just get out there and paint. It's, it's uh, a lot of fun. Um, so one of the things in this reference, sorry, how do I show this to you straight? There we go. Okay. One of the things I like in this reference photo that I have is um, how the sunflowers get smaller as they recede and that there's a really nice, strong light source in this. Um, so usually what I do on my surface is this is a, um, a wax like China marker pen. Um, I like this because if I use this and draw an under drawing on here, I won't adulterate any subsequent colors with um, charcoal. So if I'm using like a light color and I've done an underdrawing in charcoal, sometimes it gets muddy and I like my colors to be very clean. So I've found that this just works really well for the way I like to paint. 
Um, so usually I'll just do a very rough sketch to start. Um, and when I say rough, it's probably much rougher than most. Um, and part of that is because I don't mind things changing as I'm working. Um, I think it's kind of fun when things um, kind of have room to grow. So when I'm doing something like this, I'm really just trying to, I tell my students to, to make a map of, let's say like, I'm make, making a map of states, not counties. So I'm just giving myself room to make changes if, if I want to. Um, the other thing I like about this composition is that there is kind of a walkway coming down here that kind of divides the composition nicely. Um, and then, so I just kind of do a general rough sketch. I might stick like a little barn back here. I see one a little bit on the corner, but we'll kind of invent one. Um, and I never really feel too stressed to copy reality because most of the time I think people find your version of it more interesting than it can be sometimes. So it's okay if you're not, um, you know, directly painting from a photograph. It gives you some room for play and art should be fun. It's not a punishment. It's a, it's a joy. So. So I would say um, one of the things that I like to do when I'm doing like a sunflower field like this is to map in kind of where the heads are going to be, the centers of these sunflowers. Um, and what that does is it just helps kind of give me a sense of where I'm putting my information. And since you don't really want sunflowers to just be floating in space, it's always good to have some nice strong verticals in a composition with sunflowers just because you don't want it to look like they're just gonna fly away. Um, so yeah, that probably would be all I would do really for an underdrawing at this point. Um, that's, it gives me enough information to keep going with it and also gives me the space to um, make changes and be kind of creative on the fly as I'm working. Um, so one of the things that I talked about um, being interested in sharing with you was working with uh, light and shadow. Um, so many people ask about my sense of color or um, sense of light. Uh, and a lot of that is um, transformed by what is actually being touched by the light. So one of the things I really focus on is you can almost take any um, subject, like let's say the head of the sunflower, and you can kind of break it down into sunflower in shadow, sunflower in light. And you can almost just cut it into two solid values. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, and what that does is it really gives the viewer a sense of, of where your light source is. So, and that's very important in um, creating a strong sense of light. So I'm just kind of going through and hitting these heads. Um, and then what I like to do is lay in most of the darker tones first. So I'm gonna go through and lay in the shadow areas of the sunflower. And once again, I'm not really concerned with, um, you know, extreme perfection. Um, people can get the gist of it and kind of bring their own um, experiences with them when they're a viewer and it lets them participate in the viewing process. So I kind of want some of these heads further back to maybe lighten up even. So I'm just gonna lighten and set this up. And I know that I want this area to stay rather dark. So I will um, go ahead and carve in this space. A 
And what I try and do, if I can, is try and work the whole surface at the same time. I think that's very important in creating a cohesive piece. Um, so I don't want to get too hyper-focused on this and not be working the background at the same time. So it's important to keep that in mind also. Sometimes I guess it would be the equivalent of a oil painter scumbling. Like I just will lightly drag a color to infuse some of it into an area that I would like that color to exist, but I don't really want a strong mark. So you can kind of just um, suggest it very lightly and softly. And I'm also using the pastel on its side for like the wide marks and then um, Later on, as the layers kind of come into clarity, I'll be using them more on the long side, and that will create marks that are thinner and more um, precise and clean. Feeling very fun and abstracty right now. Yeah, it uh, it kind of has to get ugly. It's like cleaning your house. It has to get ugly before it gets better, right? I didn't say it was ugly. I, I like it. Thank you. It's kind of funny how um, it starts to just kind of fall into focus as we um, progress through here. It'll start to make some more sense here. So it's also important to remember that there's a lot of green in the leaves of sunflowers, obviously, um, but they reflect a lot onto these different surfaces. So I'm just gonna kind of, these, these areas here I've established are going to be more my shadow areas the sunflower and then mm -hmm. I like to rather than like draw in every petal of a sunflower I like to keep it a little bit more um focused on kind of the planes of how they behave so I the negative space to cut right. some of these shapes in to create the shape the illusion of the sunflower um and that's um but all of them are going to have a little bit of a reflection of that green in there just because Okay. Are you getting pest all over, all, all over that beautiful cute. gown? You're not. Okay. Well, I want you to wipe your fingers <laughs> on it I now and see yes. what happens. Um, Feels good to dress does. up, doesn't it? I am, probably, probably for the first time in a long time, it is I for me. I'm very sad because I really, I do a lot of flood air events and um, I really enjoy it. And I feel like we kind of have, we call it like the tribe of us who kind of see each other at all these events. And when you see them, it's kind of like a homecoming and it's so fun. And, you know, um, in addition to loving the painting bit of it, you know, we have such good relationships that it's been kind of a bummer to miss out on some of that. So it's good yeah. to be dressed up for something. A bummer. There's a word for you, huh? <laughs> Haven't heard that in a while, huh? And basically what I want is this to feel like this is just a whole field of sunflowers. So I'm just gonna suggest this line and I'm not gonna tell you about every flower that's happening in this area, 
but I want you to understand that this is receding into a giant kind of mass of sunflowers. All right. So, um, I think I need a few more little heads to fall in here. And the other thing to remember about sunflowers is I think people often think of them as being incredibly round and they don't always remember that some are turned on their side. So, you know, the shape of like that shape is not your traditional round yeah. flower shape. Um, something to keep in mind. Do you, have you done a lot of sunflowers, Eric? I have only done it. Uh, I did, I did sunflowers this past summer in watercolor because I'm trying to learn watercolor. Uh -huh. And uh, so I did a still life. It was, I found it difficult. I find watercolor difficult. <laughs> Sign up for your class. Well, thankfully there are people who, who have managed to push through and get to that level so they can teach us. <laughs> I think sunflowers are such a fun um, subject because they have such personality. They're almost like little people. Yeah. You know, there are some that are very kind of droopy and like tired looking. And then there are some that are very kind of almost proud and defiant looking. And so yeah. it's, it's nice to see the variety of, of Absolutely. That. Well, I've been trying a pastel a little bit lately, too. Oh, yeah. How's that going for you? Nothing's going well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I think I, I you go through these periods of time when, it, it, sometimes when just nothing goes well. And I think that has a lot to do with growth. Yeah, and I find when I'm stuck in that place, I really love to just, sit down with a book of an artist that I admire and just read about their process and kind of give yourself the, uh, the grace to take some time and really kind of recenter yourself on, on that. You know what I mean? Yep. Well, we have to, you have to get away from it once in a while. Yeah. So hopefully you can see this coming together on your end. Oh yeah, we see it coming together. It's doing doing a great job. So the pastels that you've tried, are there different brands that you've tried and papers or have you not gotten that far? Well, I have a set that Nancy King Mertz gave me. Oh, really? uh, she has She has a set of her own pastels and she gave me a couple of sets. One was a landscape set and one was a cityscape set. And, um, so I've been playing with that. Um, so no, I haven't, I haven't actually gotten to the point where I could even tell the difference between different manufacturers. I'm just trying to, trying to get some basics down. Yeah, there is also a ton, I'm sure you know, because it's kind of across the board in any medium, a ton of variety as far as, um, you know, the different types of paper, the diff and I'm sure, you know, surfaces and painting, but all the different materials that are available really um, do influence how you use the medium a lot. Yeah. So it's yeah. good to kind of try as many as you can, I think, to, to get a feel for what works best for you. I love the energy of this. Just got such nice energy. It's not so carefully rendered. Yes, I think it's funny. I personally, um, my first Flanair event was actually up in Wayne, Pennsylvania. Um, do you know that event? Wayne. Yep. And um, I was incredibly intimidated because, you know, it was my first event and this was probably, I don't know, five years ago or something. And um, very intimidated. I was with, you know, some painters that I had really only seen online. Um, and hanging my work with them was kind of scary. 
And um, I was kind of questioning myself, like, well, what am I doing here? I don't, you know, I don't fit in. I don't look like everyone else on the plein air circuit. And I was very kind of doubting myself. And finally, I was like, you know what, Tara, you are what you are. Kind of forgive yourself for the things that you can't do and focus on the things that you're, you know, that excite you and just really kind of hit the ground running with that. So that's, oh, yeah. if you let your brain play those games with you, you lose, you can't, you just have to take control of your brain. Yeah. And and I, you know, our natural, our natural reptilian instincts are to think negatively because it's all about protecting ourselves. So you actually have to, to mentally overcome that. It takes a lot of mental toughness, but it, you do that, it changes your life. Uh, think about if you had given up, right? What what you would have not experienced. Or I think sometimes too, I guess people want to paint like someone else and don't really listen to, um, you know, what their what their interest is, what their voice is. I think it's their inner voice to establish like what excites you about a scene. Like what what are you telling a viewer? What are you trying to help them experience? And um, you know, I think that's sometimes lost. So good to keep that in mind i think you know it's it's interesting i have a view here of your screen in two different sizes one is a real small one and when i look at the small one it totally has come together so i would encourage people to look at this and squint down and you really can see that it, it really is reading like a field of sunflowers already And so much of the different shapes can get carved out by the negative space, which is equally important um, when you're painting, thinking about, you know, um, for example, I'm gonna have a stem come down on this guy, let's say, like kind of a straighter stem and we'll have a flat, so the, the foliage is really interesting too on sunflowers because it can be very horizontal or very um, diagonal. They're not always leaves like facing you. Um, so it's interesting to sometimes take negative shapes of some leaves. And this is what I was talking about earlier and use the negative space to cut in, to carve in these shapes to establish the head of the sunflower. So I can do that with what's behind it instead of drawing every, you know, um, petal of the head of the sunflower for you. You know, that was a tough lesson for me to learn. And, and uh, I never had seen it done. And then all of a sudden somebody did it. And you do this with oil paints too. And it, it gives you this sense of power uh, because you suddenly think you have control. Because sometimes you just can't draw the shape when you're, you know, with your brush but you, you can carve back into it. It really makes a big difference. It does. And I love power. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's funny. Um, yeah, I think it's important to uh, keep that in mind. And it's funny. I really try to wait and hold out to put the lights in, but I am so impatient that sometimes I just got to do it anyway. So. You're doing great. Thank you. You got about 15 minutes yet, too. You'll be you'll be completely done by then, knowing you. <laughs> I hope no so. No pressure. No pressure. And no. and don't you feel better painting in a bowl gown? I do. I've never done it, so thank you for this new experience. It's, uh... Oh, you're very welcome. I I I I think it's it's terrific. Maybe maybe we'll dance before this is all over. We'll have to, we need a little music and we'll do a little ball dance, ballroom dancing. Virtual hope, virtual dancing. Hope your family won't mind that. That's funny. I, um, we built a studio in our backyard. We have about an acre of land here over in Maryland. And um, so they're all nice and happy as clams in the house. And I'm out. it's so nice to have a space I'm really, really grateful for my studio. It's just such a good escape for me. 
I agree. I think that's wonderful. I, I used to paint in the garage and uh, it would get cold in the winter time because there was no heat. And so when we moved, there was a, uh, basically a, a pool house, right? A little, a little uh, 20 by 20 kind of building. Uh -huh. And it's just, it's great. I can get five or six people in here for painting a model. So I love it. I know what you, I know exactly what you were thinking. Yes. I wholeheartedly agree. I think it's so, it's funny. My uncle is an electrician and initially I was painting down in the basement when I was starting with pastels and I said, Uncle John, will you come over and put some lights in the basement for me? I literally have one light bulb. And he said, no, I won't. And I was like, what? And he said, Tara, if I put a light bulb for you in that basement, you're never getting out of it. We're building you a studio. So he was a driving uh, factor in getting me this space. And I'm so grateful for that. because it makes. Well, I hope you gave him a painting or something. <laughs> I did, yes, quite a few, actually. <laughs> Um, yeah, we need people, more people like that in the world to encourage us. Yes, I am definitely have been, even with collectors, um, you know, the plein air circuit, I think, is very special um, in community and collectors. And, you know, it's just unlike any other, I think. Well, you really chose a, a, a busy, complicated subject to do on a, on a short amount of time. You've got a lot of courage. Why, thank you. I prefer painting kind of quickly. And I think back to the personality thing, it's probably because I don't have, um, I don't, I'm not super interested in the detail I, I prefer just kind of getting the gist of something and moving on. So um, for me personally, working quickly is something that I enjoy doing. Um, I know that's not the case for everyone, but um, and that kind of goes back to that. Forgive yourself for what you're not. I'm not a detail oriented person. So, yeah. uh -huh. you know, kind of, it's good to just kind of let go of, kind of what you think you should be and kind of focus on what you want to be in my opinion Little well nothing. there's no should <laughs> we, we uh, i always say don't should on other people this. people will say eric you should do this uh, well, don't should on me i'll do what i want to do thank you very much <laughs> don't should on me that's a good one i don't think i've heard that before oh i've, I've got a million of them I love this because it, I, I think the, the fact that the personality of each flower is coming across the, you know, as you said, the droopiness or the stateliness, you've got one right there that's like perked up and happy. And the other ones are like sad and lonely. Sad. Every painting tells a story. It does. And it's such a joy to paint for me. Um, but I so enjoy it. I hope it, I hope it shows in the work. I will tell people that I've put the website on the screen, terrawill.com. So you guys can go there and buy, uh, new things to hang in your house for 2021. Yes, that would be awesome. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Yes, thank you. Yeah, well... You know, we don't know what the viewing today will be because, you know, it's a, everybody's got the day off, hopefully, or a lot of people do. So, and of course, a lot of people are stuck at home. So, you know, you might see 20, 30,000 people by the end of the day. You never know. Yeah, that's awesome. And have you found that um, that number has grown with COVID or, I mean, I know you- Well, it's interesting about um, whenever it was, just recently when California went back into lockdown, the numbers uh, went up about 20 or 30 percent right away. Really? That's, I mean, so, I know you talked about making adjustments for, um, you know, our new reality. I don't like that line that I just did. So I'm going to take it out with my finger. 
And that way I'm just kind of opening that tooth back up. Sorry, just explaining what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, I like that. We want to, we want to know what you're doing. But um, how much you've kind of had to make a bit of an about face and figure out what works in, in this kind of very weird climate that we're working in. Well, I, for one, have had a terrific year in spite of it just because I made up my mind it was I was not going to let it get me down. I think that's a good attitude to have. And I've had painters and galleries tell me some said it's the best year of their history and some have said it's the worst year of their history. But I think attitude has a lot to do with it. Not always. Yes, I've been really, it's funny, for me things kind of fell off um, a little bit more toward, let's see, maybe uh, December of, uh, you know, when the plenary season would have started for me, which would have been in March of last year, um, things got really kind of quiet and slow and it was kind of like, uh-oh, because the plenary circuit accounts for a big part of my sales and my business. Yeah. And so I was kind of a little concerned about that. But um, for some reason, it kind of just suddenly picked back up for me. And it was, I was really thankful for that because it's so important to keep us going, you know? Absolutely. <clears throat> well, we all have to always be willing to change. You know, I've been in business now for, a long, 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 long time. And everything changes all the time. And and if you stick with where you were, you you know, you have to try new things. And everybody's actually trying new things and it's working for many of them. Yes. I um, was very pleased to get a commission from a, a local gallery who is just awesome. Um and yeah, that's been probably my biggest thing of the year. I've done some more abstract, uh, I call them treescapes because I just really love trees. So um, it's kind of just everything, it's just all invented out of my head. It's not really, it, it's just kind of remembering the form of trees. And, um, and so they will be going into a retirement community um, down in Rockville in Maryland. So it was really a blessing to, to get that commission too. So. Well, anybody watching that needs a commission, just go to terrawill.com. <laughs> I'm not getting paid for these endorsements. I'm just trying to help everybody out. Yeah. It's, um, it's been good. Things picked back up a little bit for me. So I have kind of ignored, I have this habit of kind of ignoring the sky. I know I said not to ignore things, but it's kind of something I tend to do. And that's another thing I'd recommend also. If you have things that you tend to do and you don't like them, like you end up with a painting and you're like, oh, I put something in the center of the painting again, or I did this, that, or the other. Be aware of that as you're working and it will help you not make the same mistake more than once. And that way you can kind of grow from that. So we got about, um, oh, about six minutes. Okay. All right. No pressure. No pressure. It's looking good though. Wrap it up. So you're not going to get it all done. So you have a choice of foreground or sky, I guess, right? Um, I can probably put enough information in to give it a sense of completion. It's funny because you can kind of um, choose. What's nice about working this way is that as you continue on with the process of painting, you can kind of refine it as much as you please. Yes. So it's not... Um, you know, if you want to leave something rough and gestural, you can certainly do that. Um, so it gives you a little bit more freedom to make those choices. So I might be able to, to get 
a good sense of at least what it will look like. Loving it. Thank you. Um, this paper is um, Sennelier Lacar. I said that already, but um, they actually stopped making this size paper. So there's a supplier, and I just bought all of it that they had left because they're not making it anymore. Um, so if you if you uh, want to look for this particular size, you won't be able to find it, but it does come in, my two favorite sizes are 19 and a half by 25 and a half, which I like to take out plein airing. I just like that ratio quite a bit. And then um, this piece here is uh, 23 and a half by 31 and a half. Okay, terrific. So. Why don't you put a touch of that sky in there just so we can get a feel for what that might look like. Here I am directing you. I'm sorry. Come on. What was, what was that saying you told me to say? Don't tell me. What was it? That's right. What was it? I forget. Don't let people shoot on you. That's it. No, I'm just trying to see you. Ooh, wow. That really makes the, the yellow pop. Yeah, so I'm going to... I kind of have a pretty strong light source coming through here that I want to push, push up. Um, it actually gets much lighter along this horizon line here. And this is also what's nice about kind of carving in from the negative space. Yeah. Is that, um, you know, you have the opportunity to really get very dramatic effects when you lay that light in because it wasn't there before and it's kind of fun to see it fall into place i think people are in the comments are very impressed with what you're doing And what's nice too is because I kind of laid that map in that I was talking about just generically, it gives you the freedom to be a little more loose with some of this because you kind of know the generic guide of where you're going to be laying this information in. How fun. Uh, it's kind of a light source happening through here. You have no fear. You know, I think I think that's what people really like about my work, at least they said that, which I'm grateful for. Um, but they like that it's kind of more bold. And um, I think it's really fun to have that freedom and just, if you make a mistake, like you saw earlier, you can just take your finger and kind of do a little erasure. Yeah. Open that tooth back up if you need yeah. it. And um, yeah, so. Very nice. Yeah. I'm just kind of going back and forth over a little bit of a warm orange color. Can you see that? Do you want me to lift you up for a second? Uh, well, it's kind of hard to, yeah, we can, it, the light's got, kind of blown out, but yes, we can see it. Okay. Very nice. Beautiful. Well, why don't we take this opportunity to, to, um, stop and you can come back on camera we'll chat for a second okay that's beautiful and then if you will uh, post the finished piece in the comments um yeah. maybe maybe tomorrow on new year's day and then um and don't drink too much tonight okay i will try not to I'm gonna turn you that way <laughs> okay so we've lost you completely there we go just step into the camera well, uh, would you like to have a New Year's dance? Um, how would you like to do it? 
Well, just grab my hand and here we go. La -da 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 -da. All right, everybody, everybody watching, everybody should be swaying along with us and having a New Year's dance. Okay, I'm going to do a twirl. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Here we go. All right. See, anything's possible with video. Well, Tara, you have inspired us and uh, you, you are the perfect cap for 2020. Thank you so much. You, you, did, you, you brought us bright sunflowers, and that's what 2021 is going to be. It's bright sunflowers and beauty, and we're going to get back to life as normal, and things are going to be really swell. I agree. I hope to see you somewhere on the circuit out there. Oh, yeah. You'll see me out there. We'll all be out there, we're, we're, and, and we're going to go to the plein air convention and celebrate big time in May because we're all going to be together. It's going to be like Thanks, Thanksgiving for, for our family of artists. That's, that's All right. Well, thank you so much. And everybody visit terrawill.com so that you can uh, give her your, your love and support. And of course, anything in the comments, I'm sure she'll get back into the comments later and, and give you her feedback if you have additional questions. Thank you so much, Tara. Have a good one. All right. Our guest, Tara Will from terrawill.com. Well... What do you think? We did it. You and me, we did it. We got through 2020. We just have uh, another, oh, what is it, uh, 11 hours, depending on where you're watching, um, till midnight. And what I'd like you to think about is to reflect on 2020. You know, there are years that are going to be good there are years that are going to be tough, and we have to embrace everything. I, I was reading, uh, we, Lori and I do a, a morning devotional. It's called Jesus Calling, and it's a book. It's on Amazon, and I was reading today. It said, um, you can choose whether or not adversity or problems or challenges are your friend or your enemy, and we oftentimes go through our lives saying, you know, why me? Why did this hit me? Well, why not you? Because there may be lessons that you and I need to learn. And I learned a lot of lessons in 2020. I did things I never would have otherwise done. Uh, I was able to step up and do this daily show. I've thought, thought about it for years. I've talked about it for years, but I just never would get around to it. And then when I saw how much people were hurting and how much people were frightened, I thought, we just need to get out there. So I got my team together and I said, guys, this is going to be, uh, it's going to be tougher. Uh, we're going to have to work harder. Uh, it's not going to be easy to put this together every day. I was, Allie, my assistant, who's been helping me produce this, uh, has a full-time job already. And now she has two full-time jobs because she's doing this and doing her full-time job. Everybody's doing more. And But we wanted to, to be there for you. Think about this. You walk through life, you can walk through life and you can look at your challenges as roadblocks. Or maybe you could look at challenges as a mentor, a friend. A challenge is someone who walks through you in life, through, alongside of you in life, and is there for you. And as soon as you embrace the idea that challenges are learning experiences, challenges are growth, we're given challenges because there are things that we have to learn. And, uh, you know, sometimes they're really, really tough. And, and especially in a time like this, and some of us have lost family members, uh, uh, some of us have, have, have been sick, uh, there's, uh, some have lost their employment, their jobs, their restaurants, their, er, everything has, has been really changed. But ask yourself this, what was the good? What is the mentor trying to tell you? You know, I was thinking about um, some of these businesses that, that have operated on kind of a month-to-month -month basis. And we have businesses here in our town in Austin who have been around for 50 years, 100 years. Restaurants, maybe not 100 years, but a long time. And the restaurant owner said, well, what I didn't realize is that I was living month to month. I was putting all my cash back into my business, which is sometimes a necessity. And yet when things got tough, 
they didn't have anything, any resource to call on. And so one, one interview I saw said, you know, the next time around, if there is a next time, I'm going to put a little bit more away for a rainy day because we've never anticipated something like this could ever happen. And we all uh, need to be thinking about that rainy day. And we need to be thinking about what can we do to be better prepared for, for, the, for the things that we couldn't possibly ever anticipate. And, uh, but we also need to be sensitive to the fact that there are people out there to this day who are suffering and people going into 2021 with a lot of fear and a lot of uh, concern and, and maybe not knowing how they're going to eat or how, what their income is going to be like. And we need to be sensitive to that. We need to be there for them. We need to step up and help everybody we possibly can. Here at uh, Streamline Art, we do a little thing where we take uh, a pretty significant percentage of our profits every year and we give them to homeless shelters. Now, I don't talk about that very much, but we want to help people. And people sometimes just need help. You know, it's real easy to be critical, but sometimes people need a hand. They need you to reach out and help them. And so what can you do? What can I do? Let's think about how we can make life better for other people. And sometimes it's just a matter of a little bit of encouragement, right? What are you going to do to encourage somebody else? You know, many of us teach art. Many of us uh, have students who are about to quit because they're frustrated and they just need a little bit of encouragement. We all do. So why don't we make 2021 the year of encouragement? I think that makes a lot of sense. I wish you a happy new year. Um, I don't want to repeat 2020, but I will tell you that I learned a lot from it, and I know you did too. Give some thought to that. And think about that mentor who's walking alongside of you, the challenges and the problems, and ask yourself, what am I supposed to learn? And how can I embrace challenges? How can I embrace problems? Because once I embrace them, they no longer will plague you. You'll no longer worry about them. You'll know that you'll get through on the other side, and you know you're going to be better because you'll learn something. 